What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. But through it all, just know that you are not alone. So let's get started. This is episode number 113, and my special guest is Fernando Angulo. Fernando was born in California, but currently resides in Phoenix, Arizona. He recently graduated with a bachelor's of science degree in exercise science from Grand Canyon University. He is a lifelong stutterer with a mission in in life to helping people reach their true potential, and it begins with health and wellness. He st- he states that everyone d- deserves to tell their st- st- story, and even an announce of it can impact someone's life for the better. All the voices. D- d- deserve t- to be heard. I am honored to have him as a guest with me on the My St- St- Studying Life podcast. W- welcome, Fernando Angulo. Hello, everybody. W- 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 welcome, sir. This is a great honor. We have a lot of topics to cover, so let's get started. Let's do it. So, do you re re remember when you first began to stutter? Well, the exact moment of time where I remember if uh, I even had a stutter or any sort of a speech impediment uh, was going to probably be back in back in grade school, maybe about third grade. Um, there was a time during uh, during class where where we got called on to you know, like to read and you know have some like popcorn reading and I remember I couldn't get through the whole paragraph without stopping. I mean I, I had to stop maybe about five or six times and since then I did notice that something was uh was different than how my peers were talking. And so I I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I feel like um it was i was still very young so it didn't really you know cross my mind to really put to, uh, so much focus on it uh but yeah i think it was around the third grade where i you know realized i spoke different than my friends <laughs> does it run in your family are there any other family members who stutter yeah my dad actually uh does stutter um I don't have uh, so much background on his stutter as far as like when he was um, in in his teen years, uh, but I do know that he still does stutter. Now his stutter is very mild, but he still stutters. Like there are still times where you know uh, he gets stuck in you know like regular you know um, on my conversations, and um, besides him, I have my sister had a very slight stutter. Uh, when she was growing up, she's 20 years old right now. So right now she doesn't really uh, stutter so much. It, it's funny because she was mostly in, um, so she belonged to a group in school where she had to present in front of, of like pep rallies. So she did that. So, but I knew that behind closed doors, she did have a small stutter, especially in Spanish. Uh, so, but for her to be doing all that, I mean, for me is like, she didn't really care too much about it or because it, it, it was very, very mild. And then I do have one cousin in the family be, besides my dad and my sister. Um, he also uh, has been studying since he was young and he still um, stutters, you know, to this day. He's currently in college. Um, and so, but besides that, I don't really know of anybody else in my family who has had a stutter. Did you ever have a speech? therapy in school and if you did was it helpful i did not have a uh, speech therapy in school uh to my knowledge i do remember a few sessions where my parents met with 
with the teachers as far as my reading skill. Um, but I was never in like a one-on-one speech therapy, um, you know, session that I you know went to on a daily basis. I really didn't have that. Um, to be honest with you, speech therapy to me is was never in the back of my mind and was never in the back of my parents' minds. I I, I never saw my stutter um, from the point where like. It was something that really controlled my life. Uh, more so now. Now I, it's I really become more self conscious about it. I don't know why it just started. Um, but yeah, I never really had any speech therapy. Um, maybe just speaking to my mom about it. You know, I would pretty much talk. I'm a very outgoing person, so um, I guess that it's my therapy. You know in and of itself, but I, I never really went to any, you know, professional. Um, but sometimes I wish maybe I did go, you know, and I mean, there's still time for me to go, you know, uh, see a, a speech therapist, but no, you know, growing up, I did not go to speech therapy. See, um, that's what I was going to um, ask you next. Were you going to go now? Um, um, I know that, that, um, that you're in college right now, um, Grand Canyon University, and so um, each um, college has a um, an office of sp- special populations, um, you know, and that's where they have all, um, you know, all of the counselors, you know, and um, and therapists. And so um, when I was in college, uh, uh, um, I um, got help because. Um, I don't have to tell you that school is rough, <laughs> grade school, <laughs> junior high, high school, college, and, and, and so for me, um, speech therapy, um, it, it, um, had a, um, positive impact and what you, what you are hearing is 20 years of speech therapy. Um, um, I went from zero uh, percent. That's, I mean, nothing came out, Fernando. <laughs> zero came out. And so after 20 years, I'm at 80%. But but I'm at this point in my life, I've, um, I, um, I'm old, Fernando. <laughs> I'm 51 years old. And so I was like, I'm tired. And so now I, I, um, I do other techniques. You know, I do mindful meditation. I do my diaphragmatic breathing. I read out loud. And so that's what I do now. But in your case, um, there are lots of speech therapists out there. So you know, down the road, maybe. Yeah, of course, of course. It, it is uh, It is definitely something that I have, um, I've been looking more into uh, going maybe after I'm done with school. I have about two weeks left before I graduate. So I think after school, I do plan um, to go seek out um, a speech therapist and maybe sit down with them and talk to them. Um, not as a, you know, not as a session where I'm pouring out my heart, but most, uh, I need uh, specific speech uh, help. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't attribute my speech to something that happened to me or you know, in an emotional, you know, situation in my life that caused me to stutter. I feel like it's just I was born with a stutter. Uh, it is just. I don't know if it is genetic because my father did stutter, um, but I can maybe I'm sure it, I can attribute some of that to that. You know what I mean? It it, it being genetic, uh, but no, I I definitely want to go out there and seek you know speech therapy and see how much more my speech can be improved, and you know go from there. How cool! You know my mom had a st. A, st- a, st- 
a stutter. She was born with it. However, in her, you know, teenage years, she had told herself that she was done. And she was done, Fernando. <laughs> she was a hundred percent completely done. Um, so uh, you were uh, talking about genetics, and there are nights that I just th- I just think about because my st- 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 stutter was caused by a dog attack when I was five years old, and um, so, you know, I think about what if I hadn't walked home from school that day? You know, what if they had picked me up? You know, would I, you know, uh, develop it later in life because my mom had it, you know, or, you know, did the, or did the, the you know, dog attack, you know, trigger it, you know, quickly? I mean, who knows? But I mean, um, there is research that it is genetic. However, I wish there was more research on it nowadays. But yeah, um, yeah. So sc- sc- school wise, um, how um, how how did you handle school with having a st- a stutter? Oh, school. Uh you know, throughout my grade school years up until senior year of high school. And it's it's funny to say because uh, looking back at it, I don't know how I did it. Uh, I got through school and I never really paid too much attention to my stutter. Uh, it's funny because I thought the way that I spoke was normal. Um, but then I started to realize as as I got older, maybe around, you know, like my high school year, sophomore years, when we had to be, you know, going up in, in front of the class and, you know, presenting more, I saw that other students were presenting fluently. You know, they were going up there and just, it was going smooth, you know, and I had trouble up there. There was times where I would go up there and it'd be smooth, it'd be it'd be fluent, it'd be, you know, just going along with the flow, but there was times where I couldn't say the word, you know, I I couldn't say the word. And it's just, I would pause and these pauses felt like in eternity, you know, these pauses felt like I, I, I was, uh, cycling for two minutes when it was in reality about a couple seconds, you know? So, um, yeah, uh, I started doing, you know, lots of, uh, uh, presentations during, you know, my sophomore year through my senior year of, of high school, but I never really paid too much attention to it. Now being in my senior year of undergrad, only two weeks left, it's really hit me. And for some reason, I've paid more attention to my stutter in these past couple months than I've ever had through school from elementary to now when two weeks prior to me graduating. I don't know. It's crazy how life works. I for some reason, it, it has really hit me these past, uh, you know, a couple months. And everything in life has a reason. So I don't know if this is making me uh, pay more attention to my stutter as far as raising awareness for it, educating more people, or it's something that I'm learning to deal with now. You know, now that it's more prevalent in my life, I, I feel like i I've really focused on it more. Therefore, I become more self-conscious about it. And I don't know if that's for the better or for the worse, but we'll see. So so if I can recollect uh, my my, uh, uh, college years, um, towards the um, end of my um, undergrad, we had a lot of presentations. We had, I mean, (laughs) almost every class, we had to do group projects and presentations. And so maybe that was the catalyst, perhaps, of being self-conscious, because when I had to give presentations, (laughs) Fernando, let me tell you, (laughs) you talk about, I will do anything if I don't have to speak. However, I know that if I want to graduate with 
with my bachelor's in psychology, then I need to do this. And I mean, it was rough, Fernando. I mean, it was rough. I blocked, I repeated, but I got through it. And in group projects, I mean, I was, I mean, I would tell my group members, look, I'll do all the work. I'll do everything in Word and PowerPoint. I'll type everything. I will do everything if, if, if y'all talk. And so thankfully, <laughs> you know, it worked out. But I mean, you know, towards the um, end of college, mm -hmm. you have all these, you know, uh, moral tests and presentations, you know, and maybe that was the sp spark that um, started the the um, what's the word self awareness? Self awareness. Uh, um. D d d did, did you find it hard making friends in school? Surprisingly, no. I mean, Pedro, I mean, when I tell you I'm a very sociable person, I, I'm i the person to go up to somebody and start the conversation. You know, I, I usually wasn't the kid to wait for somebody to come and talk to me or wait so you know i can be recognized by you know my friends i would be the one that would go up to and make friends you know with those kids that you know you saw at the end of the table you saw that they were by themselves you saw that they were eating you know lunch alone i was that person i was that kid ever since growing up i never let my stutter stop me from being social i've never i've never had a, a problem making friends um now, I, I did, you know, have a problem keeping those friends because those friends didn't turn out to be friends. You know, they turned out to be uh, students that were going with me to school. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I uh, but no, I think uh, making friends was not a problem. It is not a problem in my life now. I consider myself to be a person that is not shy, even though I I am shy when it comes to my stutter, you know. I, I But um, no, I mean... Thank God I, I never really had trouble making friends. Um, but yeah. Well, Fernando, I wish I had you in my school because I ate alone. <laughs> I, I mean, because, you know, no one wanted to hang out with the kid who couldn't talk. You know, um, um, I would eat lunch in the janitor's closet, you know, um, or eat lunch behind the school. And, and you know, so I... Um, I had an extremely d difficult time making fr friends um, later in life, you know, in my 30s and 40s. Um, you know, I learned, <laughs> you know, skills to be a friend. Um, and so um, those skills, um, I feel, are, you know, are r r really they they are very um imp um um important growing up because we i mean we uh we need to have that buddy to talk to um when we have those um dark days and so yeah um job wise i know we can't really prove this in a court of law or quantify it or whatnot. But I mean, did your stutter, um, 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 ever held you back job wise? Job wise. No, it's funny that, um, well, I say this, but my first job was at the age of 21, uh, 21 to through maybe the beginning of my 22nd birthday, I got a job at a Walmart. It was my first job interview. Um, now, mind you, I had prior jobs, but they weren't jobs that I had to go interview for. They were jobs that were just, hey, you know what? You want to work here? Cool. Let's do it. But this job, I had to go interview. You know, you go dress nicely. You, you, you know, put on your tie or you wear your nice polo. Or, and so 
one on one because usually interviews uh, for jobs are usually done one on one. You know, it, it's it's very rare where there's two people in the room. One on one, I I feel like my interpersonal communication um, is good. You know, I I feel like my stutter doesn't get in the way of that. Now, mind you, I do know consciously that I do stutter during the interview, but it has never rubbed off on the person interviewing me. So it never made me feel uncomfortable. Um, therefore, I, 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 you know, pretty much went into that interview and I got the job. Now I've done interviews um, for school that are not job wise, but it's the, it's the same type of questions in a sense. So um, job wise, uh, during in- interviews, my stutter hasn't really, never really got in the way, you know. Like I said, I my stutter now has become more a part of me. I'm more conscious about it. Back then, I wasn't really conscious about it, but I knew I stuttered. I just now it's more prevalent in my life. It's on the table rather than it's tucked away waiting to come on. You know. <laughs> yes, sir, I do. <laughs> um during your um job interviews, did you just go into them um, without dis, dis closing your st- stutter? Yeah, I have never disclosed my stutter to a- anyone, to be honest with you. Um, going into that interview or to those several interviews, um, no, I never said, hey, you know what, guys, before we start this interview, I'm a person who stutters. I've never done that. Um, no, so no. What was your worst mm-hmm. job interview? My worst job interview was actually at a Costco. Um, I was going in there to apply during my first few years at community college. I was, you know, like looking for a job and I went there. I, in order to get a job interview at Costco, you, you sometimes have to know somebody. So I had a cousin who worked there and she was able to get me a, an interview. I went into that interview feeling very confident, even though inside I was nervous, I was anxious, I was looking forward to just getting it over with. Uh, but I went in there and the first interview um, went pretty good. And the second interview came, I was able to stick around. They told me, hey, stick around because you have a second interview coming up. I thought I had nailed the job because when you get called back, it's usually because you get the job. So I got called back and I was asked a few other questions. And I guess my sentence, my sentence structure and formation uh, made the answers to my questions really out of sorts. Because I, I was pausing too much, I was stumbling, I was replacing words because I, I I couldn't say a certain word, so therefore the sentence came out kind of wrong, and so uh, worse comes uh, worse did happen. I didn't get called back, I didn't get the job, but I was told it wasn't because of you know my interviewing skills. It was because of they said I was chewing gum, you know. <laughs> so you were chewing gum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I was not, but, you know, I do feel like I was, um, in a sense, uh, you know, um, not taken serious. So therefore I didn't get hired, but it is what it is. Let me tell you, Fernando, I'm, I mean, I bombed so many job interviews. I couldn't even say my name. Um, I would do heavy breathing. You know, they would ask me, am I okay? Do they need to call 911? Uh, I hyperventilated in one job interview and they gave me a, 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 a paper bag to, to breathe in. And I mean, I can't tell you how many, how many job interviews you, you know, I bombed um, later in life. I just had an attitude that I will just go um, and do it. You know, I will walk in, I will disclose, tell them, look, I'm Pedro Pena. I have a speech impediment. I have a stutter. So if I get hung up on any word, give me eight hours. And 
and that word will come out. However, if you know what I'm trying to say, help you, help me, help you, help me. <laughs> and it worked. It worked. I mean, it um, that lowered, you know, all of their st- stress um, and and um, ex- plus um, anxiety. And it helped m- m- me to just have it out there. And once once I got it out there, I mean, I mean. Um, I was okay. They would ask me questions, and so um, I would give them answer after answer after answer. But I mean, the the hard part was that first greeting and telling them because I mean I can't hide this, Fernando. <laughs> Let me tell you. I mean, I mean it is what it is. And so now I go in, I disclose, I do my thing, and that's it. Because what I have learned um, is that in the job interviewing, what I am doing is they are not um, um, interviewing me. It is the um, opposite. I am um, interviewing them. And once I had that in my head, whoo, I mean, I was good to go. I was good to go. So, but, but I mean, I had some horrible, horrible, you know, job interviews, but life goes on, right? Life does go on. <laughs> now, let me um, um, ask you about some um, ADLs. And these are uh, 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 um, activities of daily living. So how are you on the telephone? I'm curious. On the telephone. Now I'm good. I, because as we both know, when you're on the telephone, you're not seeing that person. Exactly. You know, yes. <laughs> you're not, you're not seeing that person. So there's not really much anxiety going on because even if I do stutter, it's like, they don't know who, who I am. They don't know how I look like, unless it's, you know, somebody who's, you know, like a relative or, a family member, but besides that, on the telephone, I've known, especially when you have to deal with like customer service calls, I've learned that you have to be assertive. And if you're not assertive, you're not going to be taken serious. So, as far as me calling somebody and telling them, hey, this is, you know, I have this, you know, going on, this, this problem, has never really been an issue for me because I've learned that no matter what, I have to talk. Whether that's in the phone, whether that's in person, whether that's in public, whether that's it doesn't matter. I have to talk. So, uh, but for for those that uh, stutter, and I'm sure a lot of my peers out there will understand this, is that when you're behind the telephone, you're like you're you're in a shell, and you're not exposed to the outside. In a sense, because you're not speaking to anybody face to face, you're speaking to a device, you know, so. Interesting. And what about r- r- restaurants and drive throughs drive throughs I did have a tough time, especially with certain words. You know, we all have those words where it's difficult for us to <laughs> say, especially those syllables, you know, like for me, like. You know, like if I went to go order, uh, you know, some some like chicken nuggets and I I wanted honey mustard, it would take me forever to say honey mustard. I would sometimes even tell my sister or whoever was in the car with me to say it for me because I was I was not scared, but I didn't want to be ridiculed uh, through the speakerphone and say like, hey, wait, what did you ask me for again? You know what I mean? But um, as far as at like restaurants, I did sometimes have a hard time because, you know, when it's your turn to order the food, everybody on the table is looking at you. <laughs> so the, the pressure, the, the yeah. pressure falls on you to order your food, order what you want to drink, order what kind of sauce you want, order what, whatever it is. And so it, it has been, uh, you know, difficult sometimes, but I get through it. But yes, it has been difficult during, you know, my drive through runs at in and out or at, wherever it may be. And so I've learned to, you know, deal with it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Re- um, re- what um, I have learned in 
in you know restaurants is um if the menu has pictures <laughs> bingo <laughs> the jackpot i just point yeah take that take that, take that. <laughs> and then also yeah. also waiters i will i will tell the waiter look i have a uh, a speech impediment i have a st- stutter so i would greatly appreciate your patience and then um uh, um at the end of of the meal you know um i will leave you a huge tip and and so let me tell you fernando i mean i had the most patient the most respectful <laughs> waiter ever and so i'm um, at the end of the meal a huge tip so yeah that's Go awesome on. yeah uh, so do you think that it is important f- f- for people who stutter to have a th- thick skin oh of course it is it's extremely important to have thick skin because you know there's times where you might get laughed at because you speak differently than the person next to you or you know you get ridiculed in front of people you get picked on in front of others you must have thick skin and you have to have thick skin because in this world and nobody's going to feel sorry for you. They might feel sorry for you right then and there, but in the long haul, you have to do what you have to do to make it. Um, and that's with anything in life. So you must have thick skin because you must stand up for yourself. You, you have to have thick skin. So others won't step on you and try to step ahead of you. So yes, it's extremely important to have thick skin. I've, uh, I've always learned since I was little, my dad used to tell me, hey, no matter what, you be yourself and be the best at being yourself. Because sometimes we try to imitate others, you know, and, and try to be somebody who we're not. So it's important to have thick skin because at the end of the day, the person that you have to live with is yourself and that voice that's in your head 24-7. So you must have thick skin. Yes, sir. 100 100- percent um i agree with you because you know in um grade school i mean i mean um the the bullies and the mocking and the teasing you know and telling me that i was stupid and and had mental retardation i mean i took i mean i took all that in so so, so, so um, if you hear that every day, Fernando, if you hear it every day, year after year after year, you tend to believe it. You tend to believe it. Um, but, you know, thankfully, um, I reached a point in in my life where I just told myself, you know, I'm done. You know, um, I am Pedro. I have a stutter. It 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 doesn't define who i am it's just what i have um and pedro's awesome and pedro i love you i love me some pedro and so it took me just a long time to do that and once i did fernando let me tell you i mean you know um, i could have a conversation with a person okay and so you know, let's say I had a block or repeated. It's okay. I would stop and breathe and keep on going. My confidence grew um, every day. I'm um, after that, and I mean, a whole, a whole new world had opened up. And what I had learned is that hurt people hurt people. And so, if you have a person who has to make fun of you to make themselves feel better that is on them because i know i know that pedro's awesome so i mean it um um i had learned later in life that you know now i do have a thick skin and so um you you still have people out there fernando who will who will st- still make fun of you however that's on them that's on them so yeah exactly yes so here is 
a hot topic. Okay. When I might ask all of my guests, you know, it's just sp- split right, uh, right down the middle. So let me ask you, Fernando. So do you mm-hmm. let others finish your, 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 uh, okay. So let me, okay, hold on. I'm going to breathe. Do you let others finish your sentences? No, I do not now. When I was younger, I wouldn't really pay too much attention to it. I feel like they were helping me in a sense. But now um, communication has to be a big part of who you are too. Because in, in order to fully express yourself, you must speak. And you must speak your thoughts, you must convey them with, whether that be in different, you know, situations calls for different ways of conveying your message, whether that be with assertiveness, whether that be, uh, you know, with, you know, compassion, with, uh, you know, just different ways of speaking. But now, now I do stand up for myself more say, hey, you know what, let me finish. Let me continue what I have to say, because what I have to say is important. Just like I let you speak, um, let, let me speak. And one thing that I've learned, Pedro, is to be a great listener. Because as a kid, when, let's say, I would get in trouble or something, it, it'd be hard for me to speak after that. Like, whenever I was being lectured or something, I'd be a great listener. And let's say my parents, my dad told me something, and be like, hey, it's talk. Tell me what's going on. Tell me, tell me. And I was always just quiet, just listening to what either my parents had to say or whoever I was talking to had to say. And that gave me a great skill in life. Is sometimes we com- we communicate too much, but there's no comprehension behind what we're saying. People don't get what we're saying. People don't understand. People don't fully take it in and grasp what you're talking about. And so that's extremely important. Um, so yes, I do now really, it kind of irks me now that if, if, you know, somebody will be, you know, finished on my sentence, but I don't really, you know, let it get to me. It's very small and minuscule in the grand scheme of things, you know? See, um, during my school years, when they would do it, um, I would get angry because, um, I have the words in my head, <laughs> they, will just not come out. Um, so whenever they would finish my sentences, um, I would f- feel less than, um, like I'm broken, you know, damaged. Um, l- l- later in life, okay, uh, I'm older now. I'm tired. <laughs> and so now, um, if you are going to do it, okay, it is... For for me, you know, because we're all different. So if you if you are going to do it for me, um, it is it is always appropriate to a um, mask first. You know, do you mind? You know, if I help you, if you have any, you know, block. Um, and so I'll say sh- sure. However, you have to get it right. Because I don't have to tell you, Fernando, there <laughs> there were times when they got it all wrong. And, th- you know, that would make me more agitated and more irritated. So, yeah, we're all different. <laughs> we're all different, exactly. Um, you were talking about the the voices, um, you know, in your head. Uh, 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 um, negative voices. So you did experience n- negative self-talk? Negative self-talk, yes. I I mean, every human being does. Uh, for us people who stutter, it might get amplified. It might be more with more um, meaning than to somebody who does not stutter. But for me, yes, negative doubt creeps in everybody's lives. And every single day of my life, especially these past couple months, I, I've had negative talk. You know what I mean? Like mental health is... Uh, a big issue and it's somewhat taboo 
in you know today's society to say hey you know what i'm going through something mentally and some people consider that or make you have to seem like you're weak or you know and uh but yes negative talk uh, does run through my head you know sometimes and but i have learned to block it out i've learned to let my voice my actual physical voice outweigh what's going on in my head and so because words of affirmation sometimes from yourself go a long way rather than hearing it from somebody else because the person that you have to live with 24 7 is yourself nobody else you know what i mean exactly and so nobody knows what's going on in your head but yourself and so but yeah negative talk uh you know has has creeped in you know several times and and but i've always managed to outweigh it with my own physical voice how cool because um mind i named oscar i'm oscar the grouch and i mean um he had control over my entire life for decades i mean fernando for decades, he told me what to do and when to do it and how to do it. Um, and so, um, and so that one day, when I turned forty, um, I just, you know, like you, I shut him down because Pedro is going to make that phone call. Pedro is going to go and order at Taco Bell or Whataburger <laughs> at a drive because Pedro is hungry and, and I am going to do it. When a Oscar would pop up like you, I would shut him down because I am going to do this. I can do it. I will do it. I'm going to do it. And after I did it, Fernando, let me tell you, <laughs> it was awesome because I did it. I, you know, I shut down Oscar because um, um, I don't have to tell you. I mean, he, I mean, he pops up all day, every day. <laughs> you can't make that phone call. You can't talk to that person. You can't talk at all. However, like you, now I just I shut him down, and so I'm going to, to do it because what I have to say has value, and what I have to say is important. And so you know, I'm, you know, that was a hard thing. To, to do. I mean, it, it was hard because it deals with confidence. You know, now I am confident back in the day, Fernando. Oh no. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't do much of anything be, 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 because Oscar told me that I couldn't. And therefore I didn't have the confidence. And now Pedro is confident. I can do anything. I still stumble. I still b block. I still Repeat. I do those mental gymnastics in my head that that you were talking about. You know, word replacements. However, I'm still confident. I'm still awesome because life has to go on. You know, the, the world won't stop because I cannot say my name. So, hallelujah for that. Now, hallelujah. Yes, sir. So. Here is here is a head scratcher. So when you are alone, can you speak without stuttering? Yes. I feel like I can uh, talk to myself. I have a full-on conversation being 100% fluent. I feel like when I talk to myself, it's just, mind you, I talk to myself all day. You know? So do I. It, it, you know, it, sometimes it's not out loud, but... There's one place where I don't stutter at all that's in my mind, in my head. There's no stuttering going on because there's no actual vocal uh, uh, sound coming out. You know, it's in here rather than out here. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, when I'm alone, I, I can practice saying something and it'll come out perfect, saying a certain syllable or, or you know, certain vowel, and I don't stutter, you know. But when I have to tell it to somebody or tell it to – somebody on the phone or tell it to somebody on on a FaceTime or, you know, something like that, it does, you know, I do stumble, I do block, I do repeat. Um, but when I'm by myself, you know, unfortunately we can't be by ourselves and talk to ourselves 24-7. So, you know. Let me tell you, Fernando, I am 
I am your um your um opposite. Um when I'm alone, you know, and talk out loud, I still block and repeat and st- and stumble. But then also in my head, you know, like what you were t- talking about, I don't st- st- stutter in my head. It's weird. However, <laughs> um, when I'm going over my schedule or, you know, talking out loud or reading a page, you know, you know, per day, I still have the blocks and, um, and I st- still repeat. And so, um, when I ask my g- guests this, the re- sp- the the responses are sp- split right down the middle. So, you know, it's just um, interesting how we're all d- d- different. However, we do have that s- common d d denominator that you know we all have a stutter. Exactly. Yes. So, so, have you ever um, encountered a a situation where you had a person um, ask, "What was your name?" and then you have a block, but you have a long block. Nothing is coming out, and the other person is um, asking you, "Did you forget your name?" Has that ever happened to you, Fernando? <laughs> I'm just curious. It it has happened to me, not in the sense that I've had a big block where n- no words came out or no sounds came out. But yeah, there has been a time where even I think a professor in college, when it, because, you know, the first day of school is always state your name, state your major, state your career choice. And uh, that always happens. But I think I had one time a professor tell me, because I kind of stay stuck, I said, for, for Fernando Angulo goes, oh, did you forget your name? And I was like, I just looked to over to my side and I saw everybody looking at me. I just got even more nervous. And I said, no, I just, yeah, my name's Fernando Angulo. You know, <laughs> there was not much I can say after that, after I was, I was already ridiculed by that professor. But, you know, it, yeah. after class, he actually did apologize and say hey i'm sorry if i said something that oh, good. might have offended you and you know and and i didn't make it seem like oh i was down on myself and i was gonna go home and cry about it you know what i mean it happened and it is what it is i, I had i had faced similar situations like that not exactly like that because that was really direct towards me but you know i just managed to just keep on going Ooh, fernando the First day of school, I mean, whoo, you hit a trigger with you hit a trigger with Pedro because as you know, on the first days of school, you know, you have to get up and give your name and da 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 da. Well, um, I did that one time, Fernando, one time. And I mean, it was rough. I mean, I blocked, I stumbled, I repeated, and you know, um, all that I can recall is hearing laughter you know, and mocking, you know, calling names like Porky Pig. So um, after that traumatic experience, um, I had, I had, you know, I told myself, this will never happen again. And so um, I would miss the first, you know, two days of school. We're talking every year, Fernando. We're talking grade school. We're talking junior high, high school undergraduate it followed me fernando because you don't forget that type of trauma it happened in you know um um undergrad and graduate school i would always m- 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 miss the first two days and then on the third day i just hop in and just ease on into my chair and then it was all good. it was all good because for me it was called survival Okay, and this is how I had cope with it because I wasn't going to put myself through through that type of trauma, you know, year after year after year. And so, yeah, that's how I would um, handle that. So, 
Of course, yeah. Everybody has different ways of you know, handling different, you know, situations, and it's uh, I can resonate with you uh, when it comes to, you know, finding ways to skip out of certain situations. You know, uh, finding ways to is there a, a loophole? Is there something I can do to work my way around it? Is, is there something you know? But at the end of the day, it's just a matter of you having to take care of business, whether that be at school, whether that be at work, whether that be in life or with your family. It is what it is. Life goes on. Time doesn't wait for nobody. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Exactly. Exactly. Now, here, mm-hmm. here is a deep question. For some, it is controversial, but I ask everyone on my podcast this. So let me ask you this, Fernando. Do you uh, consider st- stuttering a disability? Short but concise answer, no. Uh, stuttering is not a disability, in my opinion, because as somebody who lives with one, I can tell you that everyone, everybody in life has things that they have to deal with, things that they have to overcome, obstacles that are set in front of in front of them that they 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 must o- overcome and. You know, there's people that don't have legs. There's people that don't have arms. There's people that can't talk. You know, there's people that can't hear. And I'm a big man of faith. And I, you know, there's a purpose to each and everyone's life. And so if this is the way God made me, then I have to own up to it. And I'm not disabled by any means. There's nothing that, there's nothing in this world that can prevent me from doing something. But myself, at the at the end of the day, you are the only one to stop yourself from achieving and accomplishing anything you want to set out and do in your life. And so, no, I do not consider it a, a, a disability. I understand the argument behind as to why some people m- might say that, yes, it is considered a disability because anything that impairs you from doing something is a disability in a sense, you know, but for me personally, I think no, studying is not a disability. It's not like going to to the DMV and asking for a handicap saying, hey, Fernando stutters, here's my sign. No, you know, so, but yeah. Thank you for that. And um, you had talked about this briefly, but um, do you think that your stutter will um will um ever hold you back career wise? I can see how it can. Yes, I I can definitely see how it can hold me back. Now, everybody has the conscious decision of allowing it to hold you back. I I feel like it is up to me to decide that. You know, I can't leave it in the hands of anybody else. You know. If you're not gonna hire me because I stutter, well then you're you're missing out, you know. Exactly. Um, so, um, no, I feel like uh, my stutter is a, a, a part of me and it comes with me. So if you get me, you get my stutter, and that's 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 me. That's Fernando, and that is Pedro, and that is anybody who stutters or anybody that goes and has something that. Uh, uh, they must overcome, you know? See, and that is a, that is an awesome answer because what I tell everybody is you want us on your team. You, I mean, you 100% want us on your team because we are creative. We are resourceful. We are resilient and we are courageous. And you want us on your team because we are going to excel. I mean, we will r- run circles, you know, around all of your other coworkers, <laughs> employees, <laughs> because, you know, you know, that is who we are. We work harder than anybody else. We work uh, like, um, okay, voicemails, okay, for for everybody else, you know, they can do their voicemail. In under half a minute. But for us, you know, <laughs> for me, particularly, <laughs> Fernando, it takes me 
about over half an hour, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, but, but I'm, um, I'm um, at the end of the day, I'm not going to give up because I know, I know that I have to have a voicemail. So if it takes me an hour or two hours, it is okay because I'm going to get it done. It may have some blocks. It may have some re- repetitions, but that is Pedro. That. I mean, what you hear is what you're going to get. So, yeah. But you want to hire us. You want us on your team because we are going to outdo everybody and we are going to shine bright. So, yeah, (laughs) that is an awesome. (laughs) Likewise. Yes, that's awesome. All right. So here is another hot topic. Okay, let's talk dating, because as you know. Dating is, you know, hard for everybody. However, for us, <laughs> it's it's a little bit more complicated. So, Fernando, <laughs> how did you handle dating with having a stutter? Oh, how did I do it? Oh, well, uh, I do have a girlfriend right now of uh, six years. I'm 26 years old now, so I've been with her since I was 19 years old. Um, but back in high school, uh, prior to my now, you know, current girlfriend, I never really let it stop me from, you know, talking to girls or, you know, finding ways to make a conversation with, you know, the opposite sex or it, it, it was, it was never something that really held me back, but I did always think about it. Like, Hey, what, what is she going to think about me when I have to go one-on-one with her and go drink coffee or go out to eat when I'm talking to her face to face. What, what's, is she going to laugh? Is she going to, you know, shy away? Is she going to get up and leave? And oh, I don't know, you know, but when I met my girlfriend um, and you know what, actually right before this podcast, I had asked her, Hey, did you realize I stuttered when I met you? And she told me, well, now that you asked me, I did, but, I never really paid too much attention to it, you know? So for that, uh, for me to hear that, it was like, oh, it's, you know, because I, it wasn't up until I think yesterday when I asked her that, I never realized, I mean, she obviously knew that I have a stutter. It's, <laughs> I can't hide that, you know, no matter how much somebody tries to hide a stutter, it's just, it's Im- impossible because you're going to be fighting with your head and with your thoughts 24 seven. It's as too overwhelming that <laughs> I can't do it personally. So but no, I mean, dating wise, I, I've been able to have a uh, success when it comes to that, you know. But it's hard; it is hard, and um, I've definitely have had stumbles, but I've always seemed to o- o- overcome it and, you know, get the car rolling. See, and okay, so she's a keeper, Fernando. <laughs> she she's a and keeper. She is because one thing that my stutter has taught me, you know, and later on I will, I'm ask you that question, but it lets me know who people really are. It shows me their personality. So if I have a block or if I repeat, Mm -hmm. um, and the other person is looking up or looking at their watch, or maybe, you know, they are not patient and they walk away, (laughs) which they have done for that. That tells me that they are not worthy of my time. So in dating, um, dating is hard. I mean, I mean, I will, I will be honest. Dating is hard. However, if you find that one person who just likes you for you, I mean, that is awesome. That is awesome. Because, you know, love doesn't care if you have a stutter. It don't care if you're bald. It don't care if you're bow-legged or buck teeth. It don't care. I mean, they, 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 they love you for, for you, you know, and once you find that, hold on to it because that is awesome because, um, there are a lot of people out there who, uh, you know, who are not able to handle it, you know, and they walk away, you know, or they laugh at you, you know, you know, or they mock, you know, at you and, you know, 
that tells me that you are not worthy of my time. So I say, B- B- you know, um, adios. <laughs> bye, Felicia. <laughs> Girl, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Yes, yes, yes. yes. All right. So, so what do you think about all this new, you know, technology? You have Google Home. You have a, a, a um, you have the A one, <laughs> and, and 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 then you have the S one, which I always have a I have a hard time with. Do you think all this new technology is helpful or hurtful for people who stutter? I think it is helpful, but in the same sense, I feel like it can definitely be improved as far as taking account those that do stutter because as we both know we we're trying to you know for example i have an iphone so i talk to siri hey siri take me to so and so and if i don't say it right away it's like i did not understand what you're saying i so i have to repeat myself and ask her again and i have to make sure i'm fluent and it comes out because you know if not it doesn't work you know what i mean especially to those devices like in Alexa that are set in different places of your house. Some are far uh, you know, from you, so you must speak louder. You must make sure your words aren't you know, clear, concise. So I, I feel like for some people, it may be helpful because there's a way to program those devices so they can speak for you. You know, so when it comes to like something like talking on the phone, you can program your device to talk for you and ask for a pizza or ask for whatever it, it is. So in, in that sense, yes, I do think it is helpful. In the other sense, I think the improvements have to be made because they must take into account those that stutter or, or have any sort of speech impediment. You know, because not everybody in this life is fluent a hundred percent, and so, you know. But then we bring up the subject of well, there's not much stuttering. Only I think about one percent of the whole world population stutters. So, you know, it's very hard to think about those people. You know, so all in all, though, yes, they are helpful, but they could definitely be fixed. See, and my contention is, you know. Like what you were talking about, they don't give you time to respond. Um, they want like one second, maybe two. However, mm-hmm. for me, uh, I need eight minutes to breathe. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I don't do much of the Google or the uh, uh or the Alexa or the uh, MS one. Um, I just we'll do it manually, you know, I'll text, you know, or I'll just, you know, push a button. Um, But, you know, many people who stutter have told me, you know, that they, they use it um, as a means to practice because it's not a a real human, you know? And so, so, you know, that is one of the benefits for, for, for them. Plus, um, there are some colleges out there uh, um, who are doing re- research pilots on how to have those, uh, how to um, have have the um, AI te- technology improved for for you know people who stutter, um, and so you know that's a good thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so so what is a a a challenge speech wise that you had to overcome, and how did you do it? Challenge speech wise, um, as I mentioned, um, I am bilingual, so my stutter is more out there in Spanish. Just because Spanish is naturally a faster language, um, there's not much room for pausing in Spanish. I feel like it just it just flows, it just goes. So there's been times where I would have to speak in, in Spanish and, you know, sometimes I can't say the word or I can create a sentence that makes sense. 
So I have to find ways to, you know, pause and really recollect my thoughts and, you know, find ways to uh, say it and just, you know, but there's, you know, there's been times where there's certain words that I, I know I have a hard time saying, like the th, th sounds or the sounds or the h, h sounds. And I, you know, like you said, we have mental gymnastics going on in our heads. We find ways to articulate different words. Are they going to make sense? We have to work harder, you know, sometimes. It, and, and that can get exhausting, you know, uh, mental exhaustion is real. Mental fatigue is real. And for us, it's 100% amplified times 10, you know. So I think those are some challenges that I have faced myself, you know, personally. And um, But some way or another, I overcome it. You know what I mean? Some way or another, I move along. And, you know, I've learned to just, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, my... Sp- Spanish um, is also r- rough, um, and I also speak t- Turkish, uh, and that is also mm-hmm. rough. So I, so I s- stutter. i um, equally uh, in Turkish and Spanish. <laughs> so nice. yeah. the um, the struggle I'm um, is real. However, like what you do, um, I just um, uh, 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 um, I st- um, I still have to do it so i just you know i take my time i breathe i breathe which is huge um and you know spanish oh my gosh my mom talks a hundred miles an hour for an facts and you know i'm just trying to keep up with c c (laughs) you know yeah and i mean it is rough because um i have to take my time you know, however, she is extremely patient and she has the patience of Job. And so I can t- talk to her mm-hmm. in Spanish and it's awesome. However, in the real world, <laughs> Fernando, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a little rough. However, um, I just tell them, you know, in Turkish or, you know, in Spanish that I have a stutter. Um, you know, all that I need is your patience. <laughs> And your respect, and and your your uh, eye contact, yeah. So, yeah, that's extremely important. Eye contact has to be one of the most important things because sometimes, um, it, you know, it's like, yo, what are you looking at? I'm right here. I'm not over there. I'm not a bird flying by. I'm a person that's standing right here in front of you. Look at me. I just, des- I deserve your respect, your attention, and, I mean, you know, most importantly, your eye contact, because sometimes lack of eye contact, sometimes people think that it makes them superior to you, like, you're not worthy of their time, you are boring, you don't make sense, can we move on, next question, so, you know, I do emphasize that now, I try to really um focus on telling people hey you know what i'm right here look at my eyes i practice that myself i want to do what i want others to do to me you know so i focus on you know what if you're if you're talking to me i'm gonna look at you and sometimes eye contact can be intimidating to some people because some people think oh my god like you're looking at me you know like oh you know and so I try to do that. If I feel like the other person is becoming a little bit too shy or I try to, you know, focus away a little bit, but always keeping the eye contact, you know, there. So. Oh, yes. Let me tell you, um, eye contact is what I um, started to learn last year. And I mean, because whenever I have... A block, my eyes close. And when I repeat, I look away. So I'm trying to get better at it, you know, and practice and practice to have the good eye, ta- uh, the good eye contact because that's what I want from the other person. So, so I have to be, you know, cognizant of, 
of that. Um, and you know, I'm um, every day I practice, I practice, have, have the good eye contact because I mean, <laughs> I can't tell you Fernando when back in the day when I would have a block and I'm talking a block, my eyes would close, my arms would go all over the place trying to help me get out of the block. And when my eyes would reopen and that word came out, the other person was gone. Um, and so, um, however, now I'm still learning. I learn every day. Um, my goal is um, I want to improve having good eye contact. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Of course. Porn. Okay, now, do you think it's okay mm-hmm. to st- 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 to stutter or um, is it important to keep chasing the fluency gods well as we both know there's no cure to stuttering and so for me though i do want to chase fluency now a miracle has to happen in my life where that is fixed you know what i mean but it's important to change to chase fluency because even though your stutter makes you who you are you always want to improve yourself, improve in anything that you do in, in life. And speaking is one of them. You know, I want to be able to be a better public speaker, a great communicator. And so that starts with my voice. And that starts with voice patterns and, you know, finding ways to um, construct sentences. And so, yes, I do feel like it's important to chase fluency, but never forgetting who you are in that process, you know, knowing that you are a person who stutters and embrace that. And that is something that I am learning each and every day. I tell you, Pedro, these past couple months, I've learned to accept my stutter because like I mentioned before, it's not until these past couple months that I've really um, made it known to myself that, Hey, I stutter. I'm not like the other people that are around me and don't stutter. I do I am different. So it's been a difficult time as far as mentally accepting that. You know what I mean? But like I've said, I've lived with my stutter ever since I can remember. So, but it's weird for me. It's coming now later in life rather than early on. You know what I mean? I feel like, um, yeah, you know, embracing it goes a long way. But chasing fluency is for sure, for sure has to be one of your goals, you know, because you always want to improve. Improving your your fluency, improving your stutter leads to better opportunities and, you know, so. Um, right. We're all different. I mean, we all have different journeys. However, we do have that common denominator. And, um, there is no magic pill. They don't have a cure. Um, there is speech therapy to help you learn techniques to help improve your to help improve your fluency. We are a vulnerable population, you know, and there are people out there because I get the emails. Um, and they tell me that, Pedro, I can cure your stutter in one week. However, it's eight grand. Um, mm-hmm. Then I will get another um, email. Um, Pedro, I can cure your stutter in two days. However, the uh, cost is five grand. So I just, <laughs> I block and delete. <laughs> so what? <laughs> What I have learned on being on this earth for 51 years, you know, and stuttering for 45 of those years, um, that I'm still learning. With having 20 years of speech therapy, I did hypnosis. I tried voodoo because, you know, I had some money back in the day. <laughs> and so I tried voodoo and that didn't work. However, I'm at this point in my life. Um, my goal is to just live every day 
be who I am. I stutter. Life goes on. Um, my my goal later on um is to be a motivational speaker. I'm awesome. I'm halfway with my my book. So in having s- 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 say that, um, we're all different in our sh- sp- speech j- journeys. Um, and I'm thankful that we have a, you know, community, you know, to help each other and guide each other and support w- one, one another, because I think that is important. Um, um, I, um, I never had that back in the day, but now I do have it and it's pretty awesome. So thank you for that. Um, awesome. thank you. with having your st- stutter later in life, um, has your st- st- stutter, um, what has it taught you? Oh, that's a loaded question. Um, stuttering has taught me that no matter what obstacle you may have in life, you either shy from it, go back and hide, hide under the sheets, or just cancel out all the noise. You have that option or you have the option that, you know what, stand up and face it. Because best believe I'm not going to let my stutter hold me back. I can't. You know, there's one person that depends on me, and that's me. There's, you know, later on in life when eventually I have a family, I get married, yes, others will depend on me. But as from right now... It is my duty to become the best possible version of myself and take the necessary steps possible to do that, you know, to reach my goals, to pursue my dreams. And studying comes with that. You know what I mean? Like I said, we all know that there's no there's no cue for this and stuttering won't hold me back now. Have I let it hold me back these past couple months more? Yes. Maybe because of my of my situation, I'm going to be graduating. I have one presentation coming up next Friday, 8 to 10 minutes long. Uh, capsule presentation, the last class that I need to finish my bachelor's. And Pedro, when I tell you I'm dreading it, I'm dreading it. I'm dreading it because, and we all go through that, but, you know, I don't want to go up there and make a fool of myself, be ridiculed and... At the end of the day, if people laugh at you, they're going to laugh at you. You know, it is what it is. Like you said earlier, if, if people laugh at you, that's because it tells more something about them than you. So, um, yeah. And, you know, Pedro, I found your podcast um, through searching YouTube videos, finding out about the community that's out there that stutters who is just like me, who faces similar challenges like I face. And so that has really helped me these past couple of weeks, these past couple of days. And, uh, you know, it's it's all leading to this presentation. It's all leading to my final days as an undergrad. And that has really amplified and multiplied the, the you know, the consciousness of my stutter these past couple of months. So, you know. Well, let me tell you, Fernando, as a, as a a person who has been in your shoes (laughs) numerous times, um, I had to give a, a 10 minute presentation and it was my last one. It was my last one. Um, however, in a list of 30 people, I was, I was, I was a first one. So I, I was I was right there with you. I mean, I I had panic attacks. I had severe anxiety. I mean, 
I would just sweat, you know, through my clothes. However, what I did is I practice every single day. I'm talking, I practice and I rehearsed it. And when they called my name in a huge auditorium, Fernando, in a huge auditorium, they called my name. And so, I mean, it's a huge, and then you have a panel um, and you, and you, you walk on st- stage and there's a podium and there's a microphone and, th- and then behind you is your PowerPoint. So I got up there and said, Pedro, it's go time. You have to do this because you have to graduate. You have to graduate. So you have to, you have to do this. So what I did was um, I looked at the PowerPoint. <laughs> I did not look at any people in the audience. I focused on that PowerPoint. And so I walked around and I did it. I did. I, you know, I had a couple of blocks, but I powered through it. And so at the end, Fernando, I had applause at the end of it. And I mean, I thought, it's like, wow, look what I did. Look, I mean, I was in an auditorium with people in there, you know, giving me a grade, my last final grade. And so I went up there and I, I gave it my all. I did it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, when I walked off stage, whoa, Fernando, I was dripping. I mean, I, I was (laughs) sweat everywhere. However, I did it. I did it. And I got an A. (laughs) That's awesome. And I graduated. So, I mean, if I can do it, Fernando, I know that you can do it. Because as you are doing it, just picture Pedro is in the corner cheering you on. I I am behind you 110% because I know that you are going to rock it out. You Mm -hmm. are going to be awesome because I believe in you, Fernando. You have a new buddy in Texas, so I will be cheering you on. But but you have this. You have this. And you are going to be awesome. Appreciate that, Pedro. For real. Means a lot, you know. So you have to practice, practice, practice. Talk, you know, to the wall or your mirror or your pet. But I mean, just every day, just, just, I mean, do it. And when you have to do it, it'll all come out. It'll all come out. I'm a testament to that. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. So, so what advice would you give to another person who stutters? You know, what's funny before I say this, I am at my work. So I, I work at, at a Walmart at, a, at an e-commerce center where we, you know, distribute all the online orders. And there's a coworker of mine. He stutters too. Um, and I realized that from the moment that I met him. Um, and what's funny is that he, he didn't know that I stuttered. But when I told him that, hey, I stutter too. I completely understand and I'm, I I can picture myself in your shoes. I'm right there with you. I know exactly what you're going through. I know exactly what you have gone through. Even though we have different situations, different upbringings, I can resonate with you. And so I told him, Hey, cause you know, he, you know, shies away from being, you know, sociable and this and that. So I told him, Hey, no matter what, at the end of the day, your stutter doesn't define who you are. It is who you are. You know what I mean? It is who you are. Uh, His name is Freddie. Freddie, this is who you are. And it comes with your package. This is you. So you either embrace it and make it a part of you. You hug it and you bring it with you everywhere you go, you know, and never see your stutter as your downfall. Never see your stutter as your disability. 
Never see your stutter as something that you dread 24-7. Because trust you, Pedro, when I say this, these past couple months, I've dreaded it. And I've questioned, you know, in my case, God. I'm a big man of faith. Uh, God, why? Why me? Why can't I be fluent? Lord, work your miracles in my life and make me fluent. You know, what do I have to do for for me to speak fluent? Why? Why me? Why? Why? And then I sat back and said, hey, you know what? I'm just making a bunch of excuses for myself right now. I'm just creating this problem worse than what it shouldn't be. Because this isn't a problem. Pedro is stuttering and somebody who stutters, you're not a problem. Your speech impediment is not the problem. This is who you are. And it may it may go away later on in life. It may not. But when you live presently, accepting your stutter is everything. Because once you do that, everything around you, everything that you do will start flowing more naturally. Everything will come together. Everything will work together. And it will move you forward. No matter what, it will move you forward. And if there's one thing in life that we can't stop, Pedro, it's time. Time goes on and on and on and on. And like you said, and like the great Nike, just do it. Just do it. And in my case, accept it, you know. And that is something that I struggle with sometimes. Even me going on, you know, coming on here and you asking me, hey, what advice can I give somebody who stutters? Is that. And I struggle with that too. I struggle with accepting my own stutter. But I understand that if I want to move on in life and not get hold back by this, I must embrace it. I must accept it. And I must take it with me until... Until I pass or until, you know. So that's the number one thing here is if you stutter, that makes you unique. There's nobody else like you. You are Pedro. You are Fernando. You are who you are. And that is it, you know. Ooh, Fernando. Yeah, that was powerful. And, you know, I... Um, I too am a man of faith and I mean, um, I had long talks with God, <laughs> long <laughs> talks with God back in the day. I mean, I mean, in school, um, um, I was, you know, pretty much isolated, you know, for a long time. And you know, I would ask God why, you know, wh- wh- why me? Because um, I thought I was the only one. I thought I was the only one in the <laughs> world that had a stutter. You know, I couldn't order out. I couldn't order in the cafeteria. I mean, I couldn't do any thing. And people would, would always talk for me. <laughs> um, the, the... The first time that I met another person who st- st- stuttered, um, it was in my twenties. It was in my twenties, wow. and um, I mean, this was just a random person on the sidewalk. Um, and um, and so I wanted to g- greet, and I had my hand out, and then he put his hand out, <laughs> and then there were no words. Wow. He, 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 he wanted to greet me. Heck, I wanted to greet him, but none, I mean, nothing came out, although we were still shaking hands. So after, you know, I'm after uh, 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 some time, I had uh, um, uh, muttered, I understand. And woo, let me tell you, Fernando, because <laughs> in his eyes, I could visually 
see the anguish, the agitation, the irritation. I mean, I mean, I could see everything. And once I told him I understand, everything had dropped. And I mean, we had a great conversation. He stuttered, I stuttered, but I mean, that was just a powerful moment because I had never met another person like me, you know, um, ever that had what I have. And to hear you talk about, you know, Googling, you know, people who stutter and finding my YouTube, we are a community. And we, I mean, it, I mean, finally, here's where I belong. This is my tribe. And I mean, you know, now we help each other, you know, we'll do Zoom calls, you know, or, you know, Skype calls you know, to just help one, one another because, you know, there are younger people who are going through this. Um, and since, you know, you and I are a little older, you know, we can offer um, tips, you know, techniques or um, advice that that is um, truly comforting now that w that we are a part of a community. And so, you know, I want to. Thank you for, you know, Googling that because, you know, you know, um, now you're in. So, <laughs> yeah. And what's uh, what's crazy is that I um, so there's there's a, a player that now plays uh, for the Blue Jays. His name is George Springer. He, you know, stutters. I did not know that he stuttered. It wasn't until my I like the Dodgers. So. When the Astros beat the Dodgers, they interviewed George Springer, and they had a segment in the news about his stutter and how his speech impediment has impacted his career as an athlete from the age when he was younger to now that he's a professional. And um, seeing him up there talking, him being a champion, even though they had just beaten my team, man, it inspired me. It made me realize that, hey, I'm not the only one who stutters. And what's crazy is that all through elementary school, up until high school, there was a French class that I took. There was one person in that class. I remember his name was his name was Richie. And we had to do a presentation in French. And Richie went up there, and he owned his stutter, though. He was so confident. It doesn't matter how long he took to say these words in French or Nothing like that. But I saw Richie up there. It was the first time I had ever seen anybody besides my father go up there, speak to a class, and stutter his life away, but do it with such grace and with such empowerment that, man, it had an impact in my life. And, you know, seeing other people that stuttered and that I know what they – are going through. I know what they have gone through because I can uh, picture my life in their shoes. And hey, one thing we have in, in common is that I stutter just like you, just like George Springer. There's another NBA player by his name is uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And he also stutters. And I didn't know that. I was watching a, a, an interview of him and I saw that he had trouble time, uh, trouble saying words and talking. And I was like, hey, Michael, I get you, bro. I understand what you're going through. I get you. And and the reporter didn't make it known, but it just so happened to be that they brought up his stutter and his past and how it led to him being a professional basketball player. But, you know, who has been the number one uh, inspiration in my life, Pedro, and as a man of God, my father, he's an amazing singer, right? He, my father sings Mexican, uh, you know, Spanish. He sings English. He led – the worship team at my church. I play the drums, so I play the drums in you know, my church. And as you know, people who stutter when they sing, they don't stutter. There, there's no blockage in their in their fluency patterns. There's there's none because it flows, you know. And so 
my dad also, you know, preaches the word of God. So he has given sermons. And when I tell you multiple times when I would see my dad go up there and preach the word of God, he never stuttered, never stuttered. And he would speak in churches, 200 people, 300 people, and he never stuttered. And if he did stutter, he would kind of make this gesture like, oh, come on, let it out. And he would kind of not make fun of himself, but, you know, people would laugh, but they never really saw him as a stutter. But I know, hey, that's my dad and he stutters. But he's up there preaching the word of God. And for some odd reason, he's up there preaching the word of God and there's no stuttering. There's no blocking. There's no nothing going on. And that has always resonated with me. And so, yeah, that's that's something that I felt like I had to share here. And, and uh, go ahead. You can continue with your questions. But no, no. I mean, th- that is awesome. I mean, that's just truly awesome. And and. um you know, um, uh, um, I do know how to sing. However, <laughs> I'm not that good. But I mean, but you are a hundred percent correct. When we sing, we um, we don't st- st- stutter. Um, I don't know um, if you know this country artist, Mel Tillis. Back in the yes, day. yeah. So um, funny that you asked that because. Like I said, I was on YouTube searching up videos of, I think it's the WSA, the We Stutter Association, or is it the NSA or the the WSA, something like that. But anyways, I was going through those, and one of the recommended videos was about, I would search up, you know, famous people who stutter, because I know that President Joe Biden had a severe stutter. So in the recommended videos, said, oh, country singer Mel Tillis stuttered, and he was singing, and there there was no stutter. But I saw that he would do an interview with some some late night you know talk show, and it was odd because people were intrigued to hear him talk because of his stutter. So they would actually encourage him to stutter, because that would bring the audience back to listen to him and to watch, and the ratings would go up because Mel Tillis stuttered, and I found that funny because you know as stutters we don't we don't want to stutter. But people wanted him to stutter, which is, you know, it kind of contradicts itself. But yeah, I, 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 you know, know about, you know, Mel, you know, Mel Tillis, and there's other several people who are known and are kind of famous that have stuttered before. So that kind of gives us, you know, a, a little bit more confidence that no matter what, look at them and what we are able to or can accomplish. You know what I mean? Yes, and and we are everywhere, Fernando. We are doctors. We are attorneys. We are actors. We work at NASA. I mean, we work in huge, you know, companies, you know, Congress. I mean, we are everywhere and we are just rocking it out. I mean, it is mm-hmm. truly awesome. It is truly awesome. Now, here is my last question. So if you had the opportunity to give a um, in sight to the world about st- stuttering what message would you convey the message i would convey to the world if they were absolutely not aware of what stuttering is and how stuttering impacts the lives of those who do stutter and the things that they have to live with they have to endure on a daily basis the mental struggles the mental battles they have to go through the anxiety for in some cases depression would be that hey if you stutter the number one thing you have to know and realize is that you are not the only one and that gives you a little bit a more sense of comfort you know what i mean and embrace it embrace it own it and don't get lost in the chase of being fluent. Don't get lost. Don't lose yourself chasing something that might not ever come. Don't, don't lose yourself chasing something that even if you do accomplish it and let's say one day you wake up and you're fluent, is that going to make who Pedro was, is that going to make who Fernando was? 
you're going to wake up and say, hey, you know what? That is not me. I had a purpose in life. I have a purpose in life. And if stuttering is a, a part of my purpose, then so be it. And so I think that's what I will say to people is, hey, just because I stuttered, that, that doesn't make me different than you. We are all here on this earth. We are all, we here, we all have a purpose, whether you have discovered that purpose or not. Um, and at the end of the day, even if you stutter, even if you can't say your name, even if you can't do this and you can't do that, life goes on. And like I said earlier, you either shy from it or you stand up and you hit that home run. And if you have to get on first base and second base and third base to reach home, best believe, do it. Do it because that will go a long way. And it will teach you to be resilient. And if there's one thing that we all have in common as studies that we are, re- we are resilient. Like you said, we are resilient. And for somebody who doesn't stutter, a presentation or whatever it may be is something that as human beings, we all have nerves. But for somebody who stutters, those nerves are times 10. Times 10. And something so simple as saying your name can be the most terrifying thing in the world at that moment. So I would say stand tall and don't shy from it. And you know what's funny is that sometimes the people that give out the best tips or the best advice are the hardest ones to follow it, you know? But that's something that we have to learn as people who are in the shoes of those who do stutter and those who do not stutter, you know. Uh, Learn to view your stutter in two different lenses, the lens of the stutter and the lens of the person that doesn't stutter and find common ground. Because once you find common ground, that's going to allow you, the person who stutter, push that to the side and not really focus on it too much. Because, Pedro, the more you focus on your stutter – the more you are going to stutter. Ooh, you and I, know it. You know it. And I've learned that. And I'm learning that. And these past couple months, these past couple days, I've learned that. And I, I, I keep tying that to myself. Hey, Fernie, it, it, it's going to be okay. You know, at the end of the day, after you're done with that presentation, after you're done with that interview, after you're done ordering food, after you're done saying your name, after you are done doing whatever in this life that you do, Life will go on and time will not stop. And so embrace it. Be yourself. And the last thing I I would say is you are who you are and your purpose is unique to yourself. Fly, bird, fly. Oh, (laughs) I got goosebumps, Fernando. Um, Okay, a couple of points. Um, one, that's a great message. And two, there is a quote that I have lived by for a very long time. And it is, everything that you want is on the other side of fear. <laughs> and that's the truth. And then lastly, I mean, you hit it right on the nose. Don't focus on your stutter. I want you to focus on life. Be present. It took me 35 years, Fernando, 35 years to learn that. And let me tell you, when I focus on the other person, when I focus on our conversation, I'm not even thinking about my stutter. I'm not thinking about the words that are coming down the pike. I'm not even thinking about that. And and so and so, you know, let me tell you there are days where everything comes out. Everything comes out because I'm not I'm not focusing on my stutter. And there have been people, Fernando, <laughs> that have told me that I'm faking it. 
It's like, no, oh. I'm not. I mean, I have. I mean, days where everything comes out. And I mean, there is no rhyme or reason. Everything just comes out. And there are days nothing comes out. And that's when I breathe. I stop. You know, however, I mean, um, I have learned to be present. Um, and when you do that, you appreciate, you know, just being with another person and having a great conversation. So I'm not, I am not thinking about my stutter, which I used to do every minute of every day. And when you think about it, you hit it on the nose. When you think about it, for me, because I can only talk for Pedro, when I would think about it, guess what? There it is. And there it is. Um, and when I am not th- th- thinking about it, I mean, words just come out. I'm not having any blocks. I'm not having any r- repetitions. I mean, it is, I mean, it is a head sc- scratcher, but I am a firm b- believer in live your life because Life is about moments. And, you know, for 35 years, I mean, I, um, I suffered, I mean, for over three decades, I mean, and you talk about darkness, but, but thankfully God puts people in your path for a reason. Yeah. So and so, thankfully, I came out of that d- d- darkness and came into the light because we have in us, we have a light. We have a light in us, and we are going to let that light sh- sh- shine bright f- for all to see because we are awesome. We are creative. We are re. This is re- resilient and we are courageous. And um, so, yeah. Oof. Amen. <sighs> now you are on the verge of graduating from college and let me be the first one to tell you congratulations. W- w- welcome to the club. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Now, what are your um, aspirations after college. So a little bit of, uh, of what I'm planning to do or what I want to pursue is I am getting my bachelor's of science in exercise science. So one of my passions in life is sports and health and wellness. I, uh, last year, uh, during right after, well, d- during the pandemic, but the summer June of last year, I lost 70 pounds. And so that made me, made me realize that, hey, there's other people out there that need help and they need guidance and ignorance is bliss. You know what I mean? Sometimes we don't know what's, what is out there. And so with this degree, Pedro, what, you know, like I said, my, one of my passions in life is sports, but now is I want to be, I truly feel like my purpose in life and my mission in life is, uh, to help others become the, their best versions of themselves. You know, what steps do they need to take to become the best possible version of themselves and the best person that they can be, fulfill their purpose. And I really believe that starts with health and wellness. You know, how you take care of your body, how you how you feel your body, how you, how you go on about, you know, taking care of yourself as far as what you eat, what you see, what you don't do what you exercise and, and, and all that thing. So um, I, I feel like those are my aspirations. I would really want to become uh, an exercise scientist and work with, you know, professional teams and, and, you know, work at, you know, clinics, but God has a plan for my life and I'm going to let his plan manifest in my life. And so I am going Along with it, like you say, live in the present time. You know, sometimes as human beings, we focus so much on the future 
and we dwell on the past. And so that really sometimes breaks us down and doesn't allow us to ad- advance and keep moving forward. You know, sometimes we become stagnant and we stay there and we don't move. We, we either move back or we stay there and we don't move forward. And so those are my goals, Pedro, just to help, you know, people and educate people on, you know, health and wellness and, and how their mental health is important. Their physical health is important and their spiritual health is important as well. And, uh, you know, like you said, we all have that light and this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So I'm going to let know, it shine. <laughs> so, you know, that, that is my plan. And, and, you know, as, as a man of faith, I really want to, you know, incorporate Christ in this. And, um, you know, he's the one that gives me that, uh, that, that extra push every single day. Um, and so Philippians 4.13, for those that don't know, is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you don't have to be religious. You don't have to be nothing. But that is a powerful, powerful um, verse to live on uh, or, and, you know, live with is that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so, yeah, that's what I want to leave, you know, people with is uh, no matter what, uh, you are loved, you are, you are worthy, and... Um, yeah, you are loved and you are worthy. Ooh, Fernando, that is awesome. That is awesome. And, you know, to lose 70 pounds, I mean, that is phenomenal. You have to be motivated. Of course. Um, you know, d- 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 um, <sighs> disciplined to, to, um, to do that. And uh, so, so, you know, I tip my hat off to you. That is awesome. That, I mean, that is awesome. Um, And then also you have a bright future. I mean, I can already picture it. I mean, you are going to be awesome in whatever that you do in, in whatever path that you go into. You are going to be awesome. And just know that, Pedro, I am in that corner back there. I'm thank cheering you, you on. I'm cheering you. However that I can help you, let me know because you are you are a bright light. You, you I mean, when I look at you, at you I see positivity. I, I mean... And that is, I mean, it is a huge honor. And so, I mean, um, you have such a bright future. Um, I wish you nothing but success and prosperity. Thank you very much, brother. I really appreciate your words. I accept your words. And I, I uh, likewise, it is my honor to have been on here in on this podcast and um, hopefully even if there's one person out there who's who's gonna listen to this, um, takes away from this is that uh, you are loved and you are worthy. And uh, no no matter what you may face in life, there's always somebody out there who knows exactly what you're going through. So yeah, thank you again, and I uh, I take your words and I uh, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Well. Fernando, um, I want to thank you for being a guest on my um on my podcast. Um, y- you are hashtag awesome. You are a bright light, and so I have the best l- listeners. They, I mean, they are all over the world. And what if they wanted to r- r- reach out to you? What would be the best way for them to do that? So I am on on Instagram, uh, Fernie Baller. It is is my Instagram. It's F E R N Y Baller B A L L E R. I am on Twitter, uh, Fernie Baller. Um, same thing. And um, yeah, I can also leave down my my email in the description below. I can. Um, yeah, I I welcome all the messages because I have been in those shoes. 
I reached out to you. I messaged you. I have messaged others uh, from the community, and I have just expressed myself what I've gone through. Because sometimes you feel like you just have to uh, express what you're going through to somebody. It could be anybody. And so I encourage uh, all the listeners out there, all around the world, to do so. My my DMs are open and um, free judgment zone. You know. How cool! Thank you, sir. Um. We will have those links in the podcast notes. And so that way, anyone from around the world can go there and, and you know, and click on those links and reach out to you. Um, and so once again, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Down the road, okay, let's do this again because, I mean, <laughs> um, I had... A great talk with you today. Uh, uh, Likewise, uh, um, I know that that you are um exp- you are um experiencing this later in 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 life, and so you know. However, that we can help you, just you know, re- re- just reach out, and you know, you will always have Pedro here in Texas. I appreciate that, brother. From the bottom of my head, I really thank you for this, and thank you for giving us, uh, you know, people who stutter the space where we can just come here and just pour our heart out or whatever we have, you know, thinking. And yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. How cool! Thank you, sir. Thank you again. I hope you have an awesome evening. Take care. Be well, and stay safe. Thank you. God bless you. If you like this podcast, head on over to Apple Podcasts. Subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you for listening, and we will talk again.